Oh, <clears throat> IDBM Challenge, Season 1, Episode 9. Why organizations have units that are aimed at rethinking the whole organization itself? Why do they want to destroy themselves? Because there's value in that. In this episode, you'll find how one organization in Japan is rethinking its future by drawing on its past. Enjoy! So my name is Kevin Kajitani. Um, originally, I, I'm an engineer um, from the US. Um, I'm actually American. Um, I was working at Boeing originally, right out, right out of college. Mm -hmm. And I was working on the 787 program, which is a, a relatively new aircraft. Um, I was working in aerodynamics in a performance team. <clears throat> so I was doing performance calculations, uh, design support, and customer support. So I was working there for around three years, I would, I would say. And then for personal reasons, I decided to relocate to Japan, at which point the timing just happened to uh, overlap with the uh, introduction of the 787 to ANA, who was the launch customer. And so that was an mm. opportunity for me to um, change career paths, and I uh, joined ANA in 2010, I believe. And I first started out in their engineering department doing the same type of types of uh, engineering uh, work. Uh, helping out with the introduction of 787 and then I got rotated to um, kind of like the human resources uh, section and then after that went to revenue management and marketing to do uh, database marketing so introducing uh, forecast models and, and machine learning algorithms for demand forecasting and then last year uh, I was moved to digital design lab which is a new organization within a and and it's kind of like it's no not nearly uh, the scale or or uh, you know the, the, the yeah the scale is completely different but I, I like to consider it as kind of like the skunk works of ANA kind of a an independent uh, body that doesn't have to uh, follow normal procedures or rules and, and is able to kind of um, kind of research and, and, and test out new ideas in a mm -hmm. relatively independent manner so I've been doing that for a year and a half now. So that's uh, that's me. <laughs> now, um, yeah, I have to ask more about this. Okay. Uh, DDL. Um, so how do you? What kind of things are you guys doing? <clears throat> Well, basically, we uh, there's a few, I guess, guiding principles. Um, we have kind of three pillars that we um, are investigating: new business models, new service models, and also kind of like process uh, internal process innovations. Um, last year it was three pillars. This year we've kind of peeled away um, the process innovation because there is an IT department that can kind of take some of that um, load. Mm -hmm. So this year we're focused on business, new business models and new service uh, models. Um, but basically, as long as there's some reason for, there's a need within a a or a need in the marketplace that a a can address using the assets or strengths that we have, it's pretty much open to anything. So last year, um, things that were act officially announced, we launched a crowdfunding platform. We um, started working uh, with drones, um, started working on robotics, um, we started working, uh, we started getting into space, um, for example, and this year we're kind of expanding into, we haven't really announced anything, uh, but we're looking into things like, um, you know, AI and uh, blockchain, um, looking into sharing economy, mindfulness, um, things like that. So kind of whatever each I guess member within our group is interested in. Mm. We'll kind of research it on our own, uh, pitch it internally, and if we get approval, we get to, to work on it. So that's kind of the way mm. it's working. Oh yeah, we also did avatars last year. <laughs> I mean, that's really fascinating that you know, you're like really, I mean, yeah, sorry, some of these questions are gonna, you know, repeating what's That's fine, been. that's fine. Yeah. <clears throat> but, 
I think it's really cool that you know you're looking like really far ahead in the future. Like, how do you, when you think about like these, I, like, I don't know how you call them, like movements or changes in the society. How do you know like which ones are gonna be like really huge ones? Like, how do you know like why should you focus on robotics, for example? Yeah. Um, I don't think there is any certainty. Um, in anything that we do. Mm. Um, but I think the same can be said about business decisions that are made on a daily basis. I mean, we live in a world where um, things are changing at, at exponential speed. And, you know, one of the, the projects I worked on last year, which was the Avatar project, I got to work with XPRIZE in, in the US. And that was a really great experience in terms of kind of molding my understanding of, of the world we live in now. Mm. And uh, Peter Diamandis, who's the founder of XPRIZE, he gave us a talk. And, and the thing, one, one thing that really stuck with me was he was talking about how, you know, humans for over 150,000 years have developed and, and evolved to live in a linear world mm. where it's like you, the distance you can travel in a day is defined by the horizon that you see. And when you walk 10 steps forward, you move 10 meters forward. And that's kind of the, the way we think. We're, mm. we're wired to think that way. But in the last, you know, couple of decades or few decades, um, we have quickly kind of distanced ourselves from that linear world and now we live in a world where you can travel to the opposite side of the planet in, in a day mm -hmm. and technology is uh, advancing exponentially so when you figuratively think about taking 10 steps forward you're not walking 10 meters forward you're going around the earth 26 times now mm -hmm. and our, our minds just aren't capable of comprehending that speed yeah. and at the same time since we're riding the exponential curve it doesn't feel like uh, it's changing that fast. I mean, just 10 years ago, um, I think 10 years ago in June was when iPhone came out. And now we kind of, you know, ubiquitously think as, of smartphones as being kind of daily necessities. But 10 years ago, it was like kind of a joke, to be honest, you know? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people were uh, discrediting uh, Apple's, uh, you know, decision to go into phones. And I still remember that, but it seems like such a long time ago because now it's just, you know, <laughs> it's like standard issue now, right? Tile standard, this is smart. Yeah. Thing, so. Um, so in that respect, it's kind of more about not whether we have confidence 100% that something's going to happen. It's being confident in the analysis that you create in, in a story. Uh, maybe that's a bad way to put it. It's impossible to be 100% sure of something, so you can only really be 100% sure of the current trends and you can only estimate where the trends will take mm. will take you. Yeah. And and defining, you know, for example, the avatars is is a is an easy one to talk about because it's so crazy. Um, people will ask us why is an airline uh, trying to drive innovation in avatar technology? Um, this world will never come, et cetera, et cetera. But when you actually do the research and you kinda of go around you realize that no, you know, telepresence and tele-existence technology mm. is up and coming, it's just underfunded. And here we are in a world where AI and robotics is exploding. And you realize that the technology, the components are all there. It just hasn't been integrated and there hasn't been a use case to drive that, that mm. integration. And then you realize, okay, well airplanes, um, airlines are operators of airplanes and our service, that what, what do we provide to the world? We provide long distance travel. Um, and and transport but when you really do the math you realize that you know the entire global airline industry is impacting less than 10 percent of the world on a yearly basis so we're not actually doing a great job of providing that service and so the mm. second a better solution a cheaper better more dem democratic solution comes into the marketplace um, i don't think airplanes are going to be seen as as being so attractive anymore and so that, that's why it makes sense to kind of invest in, in avatar technology. I don't think that airplanes will be disrupted by avatar technology. I think avatars will actually um, help grow aviation demand because once you physically interact with somebody, it's just like email and, and Skyping. Those are both said to destroy business demand, but it didn't. It actually made business demand stronger because now you have a reason to travel and meet those people that you've seen. Mm. Uh, you've communicated via email and via uh, video chat with. So it's kind of like doing those kinds of thought exercises um, it's not a matter of knowing with 100% accuracy. It's being able to have a story that um, has grounding in, in facts and um, kind of 
drawing the lines and, and projecting where uh, the future will be. And then in that case, where should we as a company be positioned? Mm. And so a lot of it is redefining ourselves as are we an airline or are we an airline that connects people, cultures and bridges gaps of distance? Uh, for example, and then once you kind of mm. redefine that, then there's a lot of places and space for you to move around, and, and you're not confined by um, using the aircraft to tra transport people. So that's yeah. kind of the the mindset and the framework that um, we often use. I mean, it's just like you know this whole open-endedness that you know you have you really don't have any idea that you know it's kind of you know exploring, yeah, exploring new ways of doing things. And yeah, well, you know that's that's actually one of the stressful parts of the job. A lot of people say, oh, Kevin, uh, you have a great job. You get to do whatever you want and mm -hmm. you get to dress casually. And, <laughs> and I can't deny that. Um, I, I feel very lucky to be where I am. But, you know, I'm not here. I am having fun, but I'm not here to have fun. I'm here to mm -hmm. create value mm -hmm. for our company. So, um, you know, every waking moment, I'm thinking about what can be done differently, what needs there are, um, what, you know, new trends are coming up, and, and so, yeah, that's one of the, yeah, <laughs> one of the I guess, yeah. the more difficult parts. Yeah, I think, yeah, somehow, I mean, I mean, I'm, like, not, not gonna, in a way, I can, I can relate to that, in a sense, that when, when you work in a university, like, no one is really coming to tell you, like, hey, you start investigating like yeah. you know retail chains or yeah. something. No one tells me to like what to do, so I have to kind of self motivate. Exactly, yeah. and and most of the time it's really amazing. You know, you can choose your own working yeah. hours, but I mean then it's sometimes it's it's really kind of stressful, yeah. emotionally tiring. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's like a golden cage. Yeah, it's um, I, I mean that's one of the great things about again being part of a larger organization is I think trying to do something new is a very lonely job mm -hmm. because you don't have you don't have stakeholders you have to find them <laughs> you don't have yeah. people on board you have to <clears throat> convince them you don't have budget up front you have to you know lobby for it um, you don't have a team so you have to do everything um, and more, more, you know, above everything else, uh, you have a lot of kind of fear or, or uneasiness or anxiousness about whether the, the idea that you have is good enough or mm. is actually possible. I mean, people said Wonderfly is impossible. I was told that by majority of the people I, I initially asked for advice from. Um, just operationally, it, you're, it's, you're not going to be able to do it. Um, and that advice was critical in, in launching Winterfly because if, it, if I hadn't gotten that advice, um, it probably wouldn't have been successful because I had mm. overlooked that aspect. And by getting that feedback, I was able to uh, adjust the business model so that um, we could take pressure off of operations. So having that community there as a sounding board and also um, having the community there when you're completely just drained and completely lonely and kind of on the verge of depression. You can go out drinking with colleagues and talk about how, uh, how everybody in their respective roles is working to make the company better. Uh, mm. uh, but making the company better is, is, really, um, is really nice. And so that's another, I guess, uh, maybe nice thing about Japanese business culture and nice, nice thing about ANA that I think if people here exploited a little bit more uh, would help to drive uh, new ideas uh, faster and, and more more aggressively, I think. Mm. But it is lonely, though. Yeah, yeah. So I think you can you share that that experience. But. Thank you so much, Kevin. I mean, it's I, all, always a pleasure. Um, it's uh, I'm glad I could could help. Uh -huh.